Hi guys, um, I'm out of my microphone today because I can pretend to use it. I don't think it's, my volume is gonna be a little different today and I don't know if it can, maybe that's a better, yeah, maybe that's a better, look at this mess in my room. So I'm recording the, recording the podcast live from my room again, but not Sunday, it's Monday because I had so much going on yesterday. Uh, with work and and taking care of my mom. My mom had spinal stenosis surgery, which is like something with the plates in the neck and the back. And I'm really hoping I don't have to have it because, although, you know, it might happen because I'm a runner, I'm a dancer and my mom, you know, she said it's just sometimes, you know, it's maybe genetic, maybe not, I don't know. Point is, I, it's been a lot and my mom's always taking care of us. So I want to make sure that we're taking care of her. But at the same time, Italians tend to do this thing where we have guilt trips and then we apologize multiple times and then we get mad and seek some sort of like vengeance against each other. And then we hug each other. It's like a whole weird sort of cycle. So I had a show last night at Broadway Comedy Club and it went really well, but there was very small audience. Um, It went really well though. And here's why I'm going to tell you went well. Despite the small audience members, um, the people that came were um, either very important to me in one way because I know them and they uh, supported my show. Uh, my friend uh, Arlene, who was also played my mother, I, me- I mean Arlene became my friend after the show because I mean she was cast by the casting director. I guess you'd call her. She was our first director, Caitlin, who was very sweet, but it didn't work out. Um, so she helped cast though uh, the the film the pilot so arlene played my mom and ironically arlene was the one that showed up last night she showed up a couple of times before i mean such a sweet strong also single mom uh woman and love her she showed up my manager showed up and then two people that came that were from just never saw the show from a meetup and then um this other guy came who he found me on facebook but i don't think it was through the ads ironically i bought like two ads on facebook one ad on tiktok and he said he had found me a while ago and has been listening to the podcast how freaking cool i joke all the time that i have five listeners on the podcast but eventually i think this stuff gets out and when he came and i said oh my god i'm you know you're it's going to be an intimate audience but you know i was going to go backing out I was about to go back out and bark in Times Square which I think I did I do that yeah I barked in Times Square for a little bit which didn't do anything this time but I felt put a little pep in my step when he said he found me through to, I'm I'm not talking the way I want to talk right now like this is sounding all out of sorts and when I re-listen to it later I'm gonna be like why did you just get to the point sooner uh maybe that's why there's a limited <laughs> limited audience no I'm kidding I was feeling a bit down i was feeling very down because my tickets in new york city have not been that low in a long time and um i have i don't do the show monthly in new york anymore or in monthly in new jersey i tried to spread it out so for marketing purposes it works um and people aren't like sick of seeing divorce diaries you know or sick of the same show even though it's different each time you know I felt like where I am at marketing and following wise, I need to spread it out. Um, so, so my last show in New York was in, was in April and a decent size turnout then, but I, they gave, they give you an option. Like you're not allowed to do Fridays and Saturdays because those are house shows. So I got the Saturday nights were removed from the selection. So I, I said, all right, fine. Sundays at five seemed to be okay, but this was a bad choice on my end. I should not have chosen a fucking Sunday at five during football and September is back to school. So I don't know if that was the reason. I don't know. There was not um, a lot of response and it was making me really sad inside, especially when you're in Times Square and you're handing out flyers and people are just ignoring you. It's a different kind of low and feeling of rejection. And then this guy came and I was like, how did you hear about the show? And he's like, "Um, I liked somebody I'm friends with, liked one of your Facebook posts. And then it shows up in my feed. And I tell you, that was the kind of energy that I needed to keep going and feel like no matter what the size of the audience was, this guy likes my stuff and other people are listening and liking it. And it's one small pillar at a time. And that is going to be the way of divorce diaries. Um, so I felt really good. It like put a 
whole bunch of new energy in me. And uh, I had another a female who came who was part of the meetup that I created and, and she they seem to like it. I you know what I'm gonna be a dork and read to you what they wrote because I'm a dork like that. But it makes you feel good inside. Words do actually affect your feeling and your mood. Okay, so um well they both said in person that that I did a good job, like that they were impressed with the small audience and what I did. And I hope Jason doesn't mind that I share this, but um he said, uh, he said, you delivered as if there was a full house. So thank you. I really, you, honestly, I don't know if people think that that's bullshit when someone says that your words mean a lot, but it does because it makes what you're doing even more powerful. Like I adjuncted a college right now, which is most of my supplemental income. And when I make money from my show, it's, it's there's been some months where my income is mostly acting, but my fallback is my teaching. And I think it's okay. I love teaching too, but this is where my heart is at performing. And so, you know, for me, the last two, three, the last almost three years now where I've been building up my brand where eventually the reverse will be, you know, where I don't have to have any fallback, really, this is the fallback. Um, I took a lot of years off of acting full time. So that's where I have to just kind of rebuild and put things in place. Um, and instead of making myself feel bad, or feel bad that, you know, oh, it's, all of my income is not from acting. I should feel grateful that I'm able to work remotely and act and do comedy and whatever month my you know income is more on it is more on. It is what it is. I'm a single parent, ha happy single parent. Um, and that doesn't mean that when you, you know you're a happy single parent it doesn't mean that you're waking up every day and going, things are looking up. It's a bright little world we live in. Oh, I'm happy as a pup because I haven't put my pool supplies away. And it's September 19. Technically, it's still summer. Um, so that's just a little share on my end. I'm glad that um, yesterday felt really good. Here's here's where the sh this is the funny this is the irony okay so after the show first of all my brother was watching my daughter and they live in like 45 minutes out of the city so which is okay um with you know but it's like I have to run out of the show and my my friend Arlene I couldn't even spend time with her I, we walked with her up to the direction to talk a little bit and you want to do meet and greets and talks after the, your show especially those people that come to see your show and I felt so bad because it was almost rushed almost right and we were catching up and talking actually i'm gonna have arlene on the podcast next week so i can't wait for that she's she's got a fun story and i feel like she's like my she's me so which is why she plays my mom so we both have blonde hair and are italian and live for it um anyway so uh, mine is not real blonde but so she <laughs> So I had to run to my agent's office uh, to film a self tape that I've been prepping literally all week because I have to do an Irish accent. It's a it's a, a period piece and I wanted to get it in right away. But my manager was like, no, 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 no. He's like, wait, be off book, get everything under. I've been so under the lines. It, I feel so good about it and excited. Taped it, ran back, got my daughter, come home. And in the midst of this, I was like battling with my daughter about this Roblox game and like whether or not she should be playing it. Then I took disable the chat because my brother was yelling at me. He's like, this is this isn't good for kids. And then I'm looking online and like it's like this is the game that she likes to play with when she's not in school or gymnastics and she's a little addicted. Um, but it does help like me being able to get work. So I don't know what to do. So I'm starting to stress out being a bad parent, all this. Get home to upload the audition. And on actors access it says that the casting director has basically disinvited me from submitting yeah disinvited me removed it's no longer valid what what did i do so i guess either they cast it with somebody else or they cast it with somebody else. i don't know but i emailed i messaged my manager i was like what the fuck and um he said that he has the guy's email send it to him he'll send it but the point is, if he's already cast it, there's no point. And I'm so upset because I spent so much time 
we're working it but unfortunately this is the nature of the beast so you either have to take it like a champ and keep it moving or stop doing it so stop doing it is not an option so i have to take it like a champ out i don't know why i hit my chin but you know like boxing take it like champ out, whatever so the point is if you can find the moment of happiness in these in the journey, right? It's worth the journey. And I have to keep saying that to myself because before I went to sleep and I saw that, I kept just staring at the computer screen, like, is this for real? Um, And I'm working on that every day, taking it like a champ. (laughs) I feel like one of my ex-boyfriends used to say that about, um, Am I allowed to say that on here? I don't know why I'm asking that. My show is not PG, but that's another whole nother thing. By the way, the divorce rabbi, I had to take, I, he is, somehow that podcast episode has opened my doors up to people tuning in more. So kudos to him. I think he also um, is avoiding my voice threads. He only responds to certain ones. So whatever. Okay. Um, Because I think I revealed on one of them I have a crush on him, but I don't. Okay. I don't have a crush on him. I just thought it was like, oh, he seems really nice. He, I wish there was a guy like him in this area because he lives on the West Coast. um, And also that wouldn't get repelled by me saying, oh, I like you. Um, Seems seems like that's a theme. Okay. I'm going to go off. This was my podcast episode for the Sunday that I missed. Um, I got to think of a fun title for it too. I don't know. It's like, You got to just take one thing at a time. People have said that to me all the time and I say, yes, I'm going to do it. And then I tend up, tend up carrying multiple things in my arms and dropping them and holding onto my coffee while it spills down my shirt. Also the producer, the character, the producer in Divorce Diaries, the real life guy, um, he looked at not my story, but I could see if you look at something on a page that I have, and I didn't realize he's still in the group. Thank God he didn't leave. I don't really like, I don't like him, but I'm also obsessed with like getting that conversation eventually of like, Michelle, I'm sorry. He's never going to say that. Knowing my luck, I would start apologizing to him for how he treated me, I, which is ridiculous. Um, but uh yeah he looked at it and i was like oh my gosh are we really gonna be like i don't know what i'm i don't like him like that but anymore but like i don't know i got excited because i was like yes or maybe no maybe no maybe he's looking and trying to do something bad to me i hope not please please i get to do the protective evil eye thing here this is to protect yourself from people giving you the evil eye italian thing all right stay tuned for more Leave, keep living your happily divorced after. I'm Michelle Trena, the creator of Divorce Diaries, the creator of Michelle Trena, the brand. Keep tuning in and keep living your happily divorced after, even if you're not divorced.